This is not just any Tesla Model 3. This is also one of the cheapest Teslas money can buy. The Model 3 in black with the black interior, the standard aero wheels, and without any of the autopilot upgrades ticked. And today's test is gonna be nice and simple. I wanna see if the autopilot tech in the cheapest Tesla you can buy can outperform that of the most expensive BMW, the $300,000 M850i Grand Coupe. So let's get to it. By the way, these door handles are the wrong way around. I feel like I want to touch that bit, but it's so awkward to have to wrap your arm around it. Like you're dislocating your wrist, but anyway. So we're starting out in the iconic interior of the Model 3 and straight what looks like into peak hour traffic, but all in the name of YouTube. This is of course one of the base standard Model 3s without the full autopilot mode. So it will still drive itself in as much as it will turn the steering wheel, it will accelerate, it will brake, it will watch oncoming traffic and give me a full heads up display of all the cars around me. But the base model will not change lanes, it won't navigate by getting on and off freeway off ramps, and it also won't park itself. That no parking feature has been a little bit annoying, but this should still be a very good environment to see what the base model can do. I'm faster than a Mazda 3. Let's pull into traffic. And now I can engage autopilot by pulling the stalk down twice. And that's it, it's on. I've got nothing on the wheel, nothing on the pedals. One important disclaimer, this is not a full self-driving feature. Self-driving does not exist. This is instead autopilot. So you should keep your hands on the steering wheel or around the wheel so that you can regain control. And already, I have so much confidence in what the car is doing because of this 3D map of the world around me. Look at that, it's showing me the different trucks, it's showing me different cars, vans, in a way that I can just swipe around and navigate. And this is the radars and the camera systems within the car that are visualizing everything around me in the same way that I would. And now it's making human decisions. So that adds a lot of trust and shows this car is quite competent at seeing things that in many ways I can't even see. But you can see on the screen how the car will not only read what cars are around you, but it will predict and show you the lines of the road and indeed the direction that it goes. So I know what the car is thinking is ahead. So nothing that the steering wheel does comes in as a surprise. And okay, the car came to a full stop then, and in traffic as traffic is moving, it's also accelerating and then slowing itself down. So first interesting point is that I don't have to touch the throttle just to approve that the car can start once it's come to a complete standstill. On steering as well, I haven't had my hands on the wheel for about a minute now, and it hasn't told me off for it. The BMW you'll see will tell you off within 15 seconds if your hand isn't on the leather of the wheel, but this is letting me get away with an awful lot, particularly in slow moving traffic. You can imagine this being a wonderfully relaxing feature. I, I'm really not needed at all right now. The car is reading the speed of the road around me. Interestingly, it's saying that this is 100 kilometers an hour on this strip of road, whereas I actually know that it's 80. We've got signs up saying 80, but the car still thinks it's 100. So I gather that this is getting its speed read out, not from the cameras looking at the signs, but from the GPS, which is telling it how fast to go. That's not too great. Indeed, the BMW will do it through the camera system, which means that you'll always know the speed of the road in the conditions that you are driving. Okay, there we go. Apply slight turning force to the wheel. And now it knows I'm in control and it can continue on its way. The more expensive autopilot mode in Australia is an eight and a half thousand dollar feature. And what that will do is allow you to change lanes just by indicating. And it will also let you navigate with autopilot, i.e. if it knows that you need to get on and off at a certain off ramp or exit, it will allow the car to change lanes and overtake people and even get on and off the freeway itself. It is behaving in exactly the same way that a human would. This is human style of driving. I feel so weird saying that this car is human-like, but it's just reacting and behaving in the same way that I would if I was in full control. Now, I'll tell you what, this is gonna be a very interesting test. 
We've got a full exit ramp here with quite a significant turn. So I'm, I'm close to the wheel. The BMW would freak out at this, but my God, and the screen is already showing me a full U-turn. The car is doing the whole thing. I'm blown to bits at that. That's, that's something else. The Model 3 is not a hardware tool. This is a software driven car. And think about this. If you make a mistake in another car, or if you have a car accident, or you see something that you've not seen before, only you learn how to react in that scenario. If you make a mistake in a Tesla, all Teslas will learn from your mistake. The fact that this car is networked and they can issue software updates to train it from the entire fleet means that you've got a kind of car that will continue to improve over time. I fully expect this very car with the same piece of hardware to be able to do so much better than that in a few years time. So that's the cheap Tesla out of the way. Very impressed. Now let's get into the M850i. If I could only have one car for the rest of my life, I think it could be one of these. It's called the BMW M850i Grand Coupe, to break that down a little bit. It's the 8 Series, which is BMW's top-end model, and it's the powerful one with four doors and four seats, so it's the top end of BMW's luxury and performance category. This car is worth $320,000 in the spec that I'm driving in at the moment. So, full disclosure, this is in no way a competitor to the Tesla Model 3. That's just ludicrous. But what's interesting is that BMW and Mercedes and other manufacturers will conventionally put their top-end technology in their most expensive cars, and that will eventually filter down into some of their cheaper lineup. So, this is a bit of a preview as to the kind of technology that could end up being in cars like the 3 Series. Now, I love this thing a lot more than I thought this I would. Function, I need a connection to a Bluetooth device. What I don't love is BMW iDrive, which is kind of a part of what I want to talk about, but it's got both the performance to pull your face off and some of the nice luxury features that you only get in a premium BMW. I'll show you what I mean. Hey BMW, enable executive mode. No problem, I have activated the mode. There you go. So what it's done now is it's covered the sunroof, it's also covered the rear windows, and it's gently blowing cool air up my ass, so that if I was having a long business meeting or a call, I could just turn on executive mode, and this is an incredibly quiet and private place to have my meeting. So I'm on a freeway now in executive mode. Let's turn off the seat fans, because that's actually a little bit weird. What I can do is press a button on the steering wheel to turn on the driving mode. Now this is not autopilot, it's not self-driving, it's not marketed as anything even remotely close, but it is a driver assistant. And I can press the set button on the steering wheel, it's reading the speed signs, it's knowing that the speed limit is 80, and now I can take my hands off the wheel. It's managing my speed, it's managing the position in the lane, I don't have any world view of what's going on in front of me, so I and not able to see where as you can in the Model 3 what cars are around you and its prediction of where the road will go I've only got my normal GPS it's interesting to see how sensitive the car is to me not touching the wheel I haven't been touching for about 10 seconds and it's getting a little bit more agitated it's wanting me to hold the wheel so this is less of an autopilot I think I actually have to keep my hands here in order for the system to behave it's very sensitive to making sure you're doing the right thing and, and actually holding the steering wheel but this certainly feels more like a, an adaptive cruise control with lane keeping than it does any autopilot or self-driving technology. I'm gonna try indicating. Oh, hello, it does indicate. Whoa, no. It doesn't change lane for you. That could've been quite dangerous. It pulled me into this lane. I thought it was turning for me, but it had just disabled the steering activation and I had to re-engage it on my own. What I don't have, and there's traffic approaching, please slow down, please slow down. 
okay, it slowed down with all the force of a car that thought it was about to have a crash. This feels less like an autopilot that is reading and thinking about the cars around you and more like cruise control with lane keeping and collision avoidance technology. So if you do think about it, if you make sure that the car can drive at the right speed, not have a crash and keep itself in its lane, that's kind of enough to drive you around but it means that the car is always reacting to things that are going wrong. For example, if it's going too far to the left, it will go to the right. If there's a car that pulls in, it will slow down. It's reacting to the environment rather than predicting the environment and providing inputs that Tesla would provide because that's what a human would do. So it does feel a little bit like the wrong approach long-term in technology. What it can also do though, pull your face off. And this is why, even though I'm quite critical of the way that it's performing on a freeway, this would absolutely be in my one car garage because for a car that has cool air that is blowing up my asshole, it's also dynamically one of the most remarkable cars I've driven in a long time. The four wheel drive system provides you with so much mechanical grip, you feel like you're going to pull yourself out of the car. And it has this wonderful ability to change personalities with the flick of a button. I've gone from comfort mode, where it's put the blinds up, into sport mode, where the exhaust is popping like crazy. This car can do, apart from Tesla, that's the disclaimer, this car can do everything better than any car on the road. It will drive me in comfort more than that Passat. It's got a bigger boot than that Ford Focus. You could put a 5 Series or a 3 Series here, this has more refinement. You could put a sports car here, and this car has more performance. So the breadth of its abilities means that you have no compromise in the 8 Series. And that's what I love about it. If I had to keep this car for 60 years and my life changed and I had certain needs, I was in business, had a family and did all the normal things, this car would still do everything that you needed it to do in a brilliant way. What is very interesting, and if you cast your mind back to what happened in the early days of the iPhone, you had your iPhone was a brilliant software tool. You also had phones like the Blackberry with hardware keyboards and they were hardware companies where Apple was a software company. And Apple brought out the iPhone and they said, this is the future. And Blackberry said, well, no, it's not. It doesn't have a QWERTY keyboard. And our phones can also do email. And our phones will also do all these things. But they didn't really do all those things. They were hardware companies pretending that they knew about software. Apple was a software company that also started making brilliant hardware. And that's the difference that I think exists within the car industry because cars like BMW are mechanically brilliant and fit so well into my life. It's a brilliant hardware company, but they do lack on software competence. The software is pretty good, but it's the kind of software that your dad might think is high tech. Whereas what Tesla's doing is the iPhone. It is a whole different level of software that is so far ahead your other normal car company does not really fully comprehend how far behind they are. So overall, because it is getting dark, the sun is now setting. In fact, I might open up the curtains a little bit to enjoy the light that's cast through the cabin. I love this car with every ounce of my being, but considering it's the top end BMW, I don't have that much confidence that in five years time, your modern three series is gonna have anywhere near the self-driving competence that a Tesla will have. It doesn't so much shine a light on how far BMW is behind, it more exposes how far Tesla is ahead on software. This has been Ash Davies on Cars. Please hit that like and that subscribe button and leave a comment down there below. Let me know what you would prefer. Would you prefer to have the BMW M850 or a Model 3 if you had to choose? Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Let's get some pops.